Hey guys, how's it going? It's Abe and Eric. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a fantastic Monday. It's the start of the week, so hopefully the week flies by for you. We got some Nintendo news. It's kind of interesting, you know, in the light of PlayStation and Xbox news. Nintendo news kind of just doesn't happen much. But we have an interesting situation that involves some legal issues and piracy and stuff like that. It's going to be interesting. We're going to read it. But before we get into that, if this is your first time coming to the channel, why don't you click that red subscribe button down below and enable your notifications so you don't miss any Nintendo Switch updates. So here we go. All right. So to begin with, this is from TheVerge.com. Bowser arrested and charged for selling Nintendo Switch hacks. You can't make this up. You cannot make this up. Literally, one of the people that was arrested, their last name is Bowser. <laughs> like, like, what are the odds? Like, honestly, like, you cannot write this up. Are we in a Nintendo Matrix or what? So it says members of piracy group Team Executor were charged with 11 felony counts. Holy moly. Felonies. You felonies? You, well, I heard you fell on these nuts. <laughs> Anyways, let's continue on with the story. It says two members of a console hacking and piracy organization known as Team Ex Executor have been arrested and charged with fraud, one of who is named Gary Bowser. <laughs> That's like Nintendo of America's president being named Doug Bowser now. It's like, what are the odds? French national Max Luarn and Bowser, originally from Canada, but arrested in the Dominican Republic, allegedly led the group, which makes a line of tools for cracking lockdown gaming hardware. Dominican Republic? Is this guy, like, rich? <laughs> Team Executor is a sophisticated operation known best for its Nintendo hacks, including a USB device called the SX Pro that allows the Nintendo Switch to run pirated games. The group's for-profit motive has made it controversial in the modding and emulation communities, reports Ars Technica, because these communities tend to focus on open source efforts and shy away from selling products that could draw the attention of both console makers and federal authorities. So, like, that's like... um. I remember when I used to have the Wii and the Wii U, the homebrew channel was free. All the uh, hacks, all the mods, they always had like a warning screen saying, do not pay for this software. Team Executioner, execu I want to say Executioner, Team Executor also makes hacking tools for the Nintendo 3DS and the NES Classic, among other devices. This goes on to say that Nintendo is well aware of the group having filed two lawsuits against the organization back in Maine with the primary intention of shutting down third-party retailers that resell Team Exeter's products online. So there's actual websites and stuff that you can buy these products. Nintendo also has a controversial history of its own involving aggressive litigation over unauthorized use of its intellectual property. So, you know, ROM sites, emulator sites, fan games. Nintendo is pretty strong-armed when it comes to knocking this stuff down so of course if you're modding and pirating nintendo products they're going to be coming at you it says in more recent years nintendo's gone after so-called rom sites that have hosted ripped game files and other sites and web stores that traffic in pirated content and related hardware tools the justice department has gone further so this this went to like the fbi these defendants were allegedly leaders of a notorious international criminal group that reaped illegal profits for years by pirating video game technology of U.S. companies. Brian C. Rabbit, the acting assistant attorney general of the Justice Department's criminal division, said in a statement, These arrests show that the department will hold accountable hackers who seek to commandeer and exploit the intellectual property of American companies for financial gain, no matter where they may be located. So they're like, we're going to get your butt. <laughs> like, okay. Just my opinion, I get it. It's illegal. It's piracy. I'm all for that. But I wish they put this much effort into capturing other criminals. But I digress. It says the Justice Department tries to emphasize the difference between ex Exeter's activities and not-for-profit emulation or console hacking. The release says Exeter attempted to protect its overall business by using a wide variety of brands, websites, and distribution channels, according to the indictment, and that the group cloaked its illegal activity with the purported desire to support gaming enthusiasts who wanted to design their own video games for non-commercial use. So they kind of tried to use like a verbal loophole, you know, with their messaging and stuff like that on their websites. But the primary posts 
purpose of the group's activities was to develop and sell for profit tools for running pirated games and additionally to help create and support online libraries of pirated video games. So they got busted for that. Both men face severe prison time if convicted, including 20 years for each charge of conspiracy to commit wire fraud, wire fraud and conspiracy to commit money laundering with up to five years for some of the lesser charges. No trial date has been set. So Bowser committed a no no. Now this is pretty interesting. This has been going on for quite some time. Like I said, they've been in a lawsuit with some of their stuff back in May. So it could definitely be a frustrating effort with Nintendo. And it's amazing how many different types of lawsuits and litigation and stuff big companies like Nintendo go through each and every single year. Uh, I'm not too familiar with the modding scene or the hacking scene on the Nintendo Switch. I really didn't get onto it because it seemed like there was a lot of actual like technical work and stuff that you need to work around to actually mod it. And as opposed to the Wii and the Wii U where you just need an SD card and to use a hack from like Smash Brothers or some kind of other game that has some kind of like exploit that you can use to hack the system. Uh, I just never really got into the Switch thing. I, I know some people that have mods on their Switches, people who have certain abilities to play certain things, people who have capture carded 3DSs and stuff like that. I just never really have gotten involved when it comes to that stuff. Uh, it, this is definitely interesting though, the whole account of them getting arrested and charged with the fraud in regards to this. Um, looking at the other article, you can see right here, this is the actual United States Department of Justice um, for immediate release, press release, and you can see all the information in here. Um, some of these quotes were from the article that we just read, but you can see why this is serious. Like, for example, it says theft of intellectual property hurts U.S. industry, game developers, and exploits legitimate gaming customers, all which threaten the leg legitimacy of the commercial video game industry. So, basically, they're trying to make sure that the copyright of the video game industry is put to rest. And it's amazing. Again, I, I don't know how often this happens with media, with movies, with gaming, anything like this. This is the first time I've actually heard of the FBI or the Department of Justice coming after somebody. So I found it quite interesting. And then again, the name of Bowser on top of that. Um, I mean, good for them for actually going out and getting these people, even though they were in a different country. Um, very serious offense for them. 11 counts, 11 felony counts. So these guys are going to see some serious jail time. Oof. I don't know, guys. What are your thoughts down below? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Have a great day. Peace out.